This series is entitled Servant Leader. I talked to you about part one, the four parts of that. I'm going to start a second part of this series that's going to begin to look at the mind of a servant. I talked about a servant's heart uh, uh, in the last message, but I want to go even deeper today. We started this series based upon Jesus looking at his disciples who were striving and squabbling over positions. And he said, this is not how we're going to operate. We're not going to fight to get ahead. We're not going to fight to get recognized. He said, as a matter of fact, if you are great, I want you to become a servant. If you have positions, I want you to become a minister. This is how I want you to operate. So today, I'm going to look at the greatest servant, which was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what he said. He said, I didn't come here to be served, I came here to serve. And we ought to be like him. This is what every Christian has to embrace. I need you all to embrace this idea of a servant leader, that the way we lead this world is through service and not through trying to be big or trying to get ahead or trying to be somebody. So let's look at this. Philippians 2 and 5, are y'all with me? Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this mind be in you, that's what we're going to deal with today, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's a command. Every Christian must take on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in, in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go to 2 Timothy 2 and 24, Paul's letter to his son Timothy, his spiritual son Timothy, uh, where we learn a lot about how we should conduct because of what Paul instructed Timothy on how he should live. In 2 Timothy 2 and 24, the Bible says, and the servant of the Lord. Now look at this. So Jesus says you must be a servant. Paul says to Philippians, get the same mind of Jesus. Now Paul says to Timothy, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. Everybody say fight. The servant must not fight. Y'all hear me on this. You must not fight over positions. You must not fight over titles. You must not fight over this or over that. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance and the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by his will. The final passage, you don't have to turn to it, I, I, you should know it by heart, and that is Galatians 5 and 22, which says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Uh, 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 the Bible says, against such there is no law. Now, when we started this series on servant leader, the first keys that I was trying to get into your spirit is how to behave, what to do, how to do. May I help you, please? Uh, uh, serving people who offend you, serving when you have been offended, uh, 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 not quitting when those that are serving you are offensive. The next key that I want to deal with is now I want to dig into the mind. Everybody say the mind. We want to zero in on a servant's mind, a servant's mind. Last message, I talked about the heart, which was the, the mind, the will, and the emotions, uh, uh, how you think, how you feel, and what you do. Today, I want to really dig into this mind. Let me tell you something. This is going to be some good stuff now. I need you all to pay attention to this. This is good stuff. Jesus says, uh, Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, 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 uh. The New Living Translation says, you got to have the same type of attitude that Christ had. 
And the problem is we got a lot of Christians, but we don't have the mind of Christ. A lot of people go to church. A lot of people say, I'm a Christian, but they don't have a Christ-like mind. Uh -huh. That's the problem with the church today. We don't have the mind of Christ. We don't have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What is the one thing that characterizes the mind of Christ? If there was one word, if there was one word that you would use to characterize the mind of Christ, uh, I imagine some of you would come up with all kinds of names. He, savior, great, healer, deliverer. He was the man. Uh, uh, died on the cross, crucified. You know what the one word should be? Humility. 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 Humility is the mind of Christ. I'm going to show it to you today. And thus the mind of a servant. And so it should be the mind that we should have. Say that with me, humility. Humility. You and I have a problem. <laughs> Push your name and say, we got a problem. We got a problem. What's the problem? We can't be humble. Oh, I'm a preacher in this place. It is not within your nature to be humble. You were not made that way. You were not taught that way. You were not instructed that way. You don't live around people who are that way. You don't work with people that way. Paul said, behold, I was Shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, the way I was born and the way I was raised is completely diametrically opposed to the way I'm supposed to be as a Christian. Everything about me, even the way you were raised and taught and brought up, is completely opposite of what Christ wants us to be. Y'all ain't working with me. We don't like being offended. We don't want to be ignored. I'm preaching right here. I will not be ignored. You offended me. You hurt my feelings. We don't like being trampled on. We don't like being taken advantage of, insulted, abused, taken uh, uh, for granted. And yet, these are the positions of the servant. The masters walk into the room. They don't even acknowledge the servant. They ignore him. The servant doesn't even get paid. Oh, y'all ain't working with a brother right there. In Paul's letter to Timothy, he describes the qualities and core values of a servant. He said... In this second lesson that we wrote, a servant of the Lord must not strive. That is, fight for position. Fight to get recognized. Fight for title. Oh, I'm preaching right there. He says here, he must be gentle, patient, meek. Without salvation, let me hear, listen to me real quickly. These roles, these values, these core values, these qualities are not innate within human beings. It's not how we were created. It's not how we were raised. We want to be recognized. We want to be somebody. We raise our kids to be somebody. We talk about how great our somebodies are. My child on the honor roll. Got bumper stickers. You don't see no sign that say my child is under the honor roll. <laughs> my child bringing up the rear. No, and we put it in them. Get ahead, be somebody. Make something of yourself. And without the Holy Ghost, without the Holy Spirit, not only are we not willing to do this, 
We are not even able to do it. I don't care how much you come to church. It is not within your nature to let somebody take advantage of you. It is not within your nature to be uh, 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 abused or offended and say nothing about it. It is not within your human nature. Boy, I'm shutting some of y'all down. This ain't the kind of teaching I want, Pastor. Let this mind, okay? I'm just trying, I'm, I'm, I, see, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. So God knew, because you weren't created that way, it's not your nature, so God did something. He gave us the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and within that is the power to change who you naturally, humanistically, naturally, and naturally are and become the spiritual being with love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. These things come from the Holy Ghost. The challenge that we're going to have, everybody hear me now, hear me, hear me, hear me, is two minds. Now these two minds are going to blow you away. I'm going to teach on both of them eventually in this series. One is the mind of Christ. Check this out. And the other one is the mind of God. And they are different. The mind of Christ and the mind of God. Check this out. The mind of Christ is known as kenosis. It means to be emptied. It is a seven-step process. Now y'all know what the steps are for. I thought I got some steps up there. I'm trying to go walking up to heaven. Praise Jesus. It's a seven-step process, which we're going to talk about in this series. It is what is called the steps to humility, the mind of Christ. The key thing about Christ's mind was humility, and the only way to get that is you got to go through a process. It is not natural. It is not nature. Getting saved don't make you humble. We got some arrogant Christians. We got some arrogant pastors and arrogant bishops. We want our titles. We want to be somebody. I'm poo-poo all week long. I want to be a pimp when I go to church. I'm somebody. You do what I say. Well, y'all ain't, work, ain't working with me. No, that's our culture. That's our heritage. We were slaves all week. We went to church. We were somebody. We put on our Sunday best. See, some people don't even know our heritage. We're trying to dress like the mother folks. They never went through what we went through. We only had one day to be somebody. Okay, y'all still ain't working with the brother. So we took advantage. I'm going to look sharp on Sunday. I'm going to be somebody on Sunday. I'm going to be the man on Sunday. Somebody say hallelujah. Stay with me now. Stay with me. It is the process of humiliation. However, if you keep reading that same passage that I started with, you will also read about the mind of God, which is the complete opposite. The mind of God is seven steps to exaltation. The mind of Christ is seven steps down to humiliation. The mind of God is seven steps up to exaltation. The problem with most of us is we want to bypass Christ's mind and go straight to God's mind. We don't want to go through the process. We just want to be the big man, but we never went down so that we could go up. We just want to be the millionaire, but we don't want to go through three bankruptcies. We just want to be the boss. But we don't want to be humiliated and fired and let go and, and bankrupt and lose our house and lose our car. Oh. Have people laughing and talking about us. The Bible says, looking to Jesus. Y'all stay with me. Because, see, we were created in the image of God. And God is a proud man. God said, you ain't going to have nobody before me. God said, I will not be ignored. <laughs> Y'all ain't working with a brother right there. You were created in his image. But yet, in order to really get to him, you got to take on the image of his son, Christ, which was who humbled. Okay, I'm preaching right now. Y'all not getting this. And so we want to go straight to God's status, but we ain't went to Christ's status. 
looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy. Y'all got to get this. I, 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 I want you to get this because this is very important. We, uh, uh, the servant leader, the servant leader must stop focusing on how to get ahead and start focusing on how to get Lord. The mind of God is to exalt. The mind of Christ is to lower. My message is simply, the mind of Christ, seven steps to humiliation. The mind of Christ, seven steps to humiliation. These seven steps that you got to go through is what I put up here. We're not going to deal with all of them today, because otherwise y'all beating be in left church. The first step, down. So what's happening is, is when you're born and raised, you are literally feeling yourself. I hope this don't break. <laughs> and you're up on this top step. And in order to take on the mind of Christ, you got to start lowering yourself. You got to start going through this process of lowering yourself. You got to take these steps down. You got to take these steps down. This is what your Lord and Savior did. He was already up. He was in heaven. He was at the glory of God. Oh, Y'all ain't working with me. But then he said, I got to go down. I got to go down. That's my mind. I got to go down. So he first had to, first step was you got to leave. The second step is you got to empty. The third step is you got to lower. We're going to talk about each one of these. The fourth step is, is you got to make. The fifth step is, is you got to humble. The sixth step is, is you've got to destroy. Each one of these, the, the, the adjective at the end of them is yourself. Everybody say leave. No, I say leave. You're going to say yourself. Empty, lower, make, I'm going to explain that, humble, destroy, and finally, disgrace, disgrace yourself. Oh, y'all don't like this teaching, but that's all right, that's all right. See, I'm going to teach y'all the truth. I am not going to be giving y'all, see, some people only want to tell you how to go up the stairs. But you see, you can't go up until you go down. You know why? Because it is not your mission to go up. It is not to be in your mind to go up. Because going up does nothing for your purpose. See, the servant was here to serve people, to win people. You don't win people by going up. You win people by... Christ could have stayed in heaven, but he would have never won us. Y'all still ain't helping me. Christ said, I was already in heaven, but he would have never won us. He had to come down to win us. And then he could take us. Okay. Everybody say step one. Leave yourself. Philippians 2 and 6. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Christ's first step down to humility was that he left glory. He left his glory. He left. It, 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 it is beyond human comprehension to understand that our Lord really did this. He was already taught. A lot of y'all trying to get to be somebody. He was already that. Y'all trying to get money. He already had it. Y'all trying to get power. He already had it. Anything that was everything that could be achieved that we are going through life killing ourselves trying to get, he had it. Now let me be real clear. <laughs> oh my God. Once you didn't get what you've been trying to get, it's, tr it's hard to let it go. I'm preaching. We hate losing positions. We rejoice when somebody talk about promoting us. We talk about our new jobs, our new careers. But let one of y'all, through no fault of your own, get laid off. You don't even want nobody to know. 
you get demoted. I've had people quit jobs because they got demoted. I will not be, okay, see? You're going to treat me like that. Oh, no, I've had people, they would quit a job rather than get demoted for less pay. One person was making this amount of money. They got demoted. They, the pay was going to go down 5000 And they said, I can't live off of this. So they quit the job and lived off of nothing. I guess you could live off of that then, huh? You just didn't want to leave. We don't like leaving our position. Even being in line. Y'all ain't working with a brother right there. You got to use the bathroom. But you've been waiting in line. And you don't want to leave. You even would say this. Can you hold my position? <laughs> that young man that got killed over road rage. Somebody probably cut somebody off or something like that. And, and that was a problem for me. I don't like being cut off. I mean, you see somebody come, you uh, What? The light going to be red when you get to it, but you don't want to lose your position. The light going to be red, but I'm going to be there red first. Because we don't like, once we've achieved something, we don't like the idea of losing what we already done got. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. I told you it's not natural. It's, it's not something, when you didn't achieve something, to let it go, that ain't natural. Nobody likes to do that. You don't want to lose your position. Like, I'm going backward. I'm taking one step forward and two steps back. We hate that. We hate losing. We develop enemies and haters because they threaten to take our position or our title. They out to get us. These positions are what are called our positions of glory. I'm in my glory. I'm the head whatever. And I'm in my glory. And I don't want to let it go. I don't want to lose it. 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 And now we do everything we can to hang on to that little bit of something that we didn't achieve. To hang on to that little bit of the position. Hang on to that little title. Leave your glory. So how do you leave your glory? How, how, how is that possible? How can a person do that when it's not your nature to do it? You have to embrace joy. Everybody say joy. Remember I told you, God gave you his spirit. Within that spirit is this thing called joy. Christ was at the right hand of God, but left, left, voluntarily. Nobody made him, nobody forced him, nobody gave him a red slip, nobody gave him a pink slip, nobody tell him we're, that we're having a, a resource uh, reassignment, nobody told him your job is moving to Mexico. Y'all ain't working with a brother right there. Nobody say we're having a 10% cutback. Nobody said you, you, you're not what we're looking for right now. He voluntarily left. Now check this out. The, Bi the Bible says this, and I think this is powerful, First Lady. See, Jesus thought it not Robert to be equal with God, but he left. He wasn't trying to get it all because he already had it, and yet he left. It wasn't reluctantly, and yet he left. Now Hebrews writer tells us how he did it. Hebrews 12 and 2. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, everybody say joy, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of, on the throne of God. How do you release something that you are holding on to? You got to have a joy for what you're going to. Y'all ain't working with me. Uh, 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 stand up, brother. See? Uh, uh, um, see, if, if I didn't achieve this, stand up right there, stand up right there, stand, you stand up right there, stand up right there. See, he, this is what I got. This is what I got. And I done worked hard to get this. The brother worked hard to get that little piece of car. I worked hard to get that house. I worked hard to get that. I went to school, got my degree, got all that. I worked hard. And I don't want to let it go. So why would I let it go? I got to believe that what I'm going to uh, 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 is greater, but it don't look greater, but it is greater. And therefore, I have a joy for what I'm going to, and I can let go of what I already got. So I got to believe 
that there's something greater over here because see, I can't stay here and get that. I can't stay here and get that. I got to let this go to get to this. And I have a joy because I believe that this mission over here is greater than the thing that I already got. This mission over here. See, I, this, I'm already saved. I already have this. But my mission is to save that brother right there. This is my money. This is my job. But my mission is to save him. But I can't save him in my glory. I can't save him in heaven. I got to take a step down out of my glory in order to get to him. And I got a joy about it. Thank you, brothers. I got a joy. See, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. See, you can't do that within your own strength. There must be a joy. There must be a joy that says if I let this go, something greater is going to come out of this. See, a lot of people have a problem with that. We hate letting go. But sometimes you got to realize that sometimes less is more. Sometimes when you let something go, you release yourself from the bondage that is trying to take you someplace better but you don't see it as better because you're not looking at it with the mind of Christ Christ said I got to go down to get to y'all y'all uh, oh y'all think y'all here but you really aren't you in fake glory you in fake stuff this is the glory of being at the right hand of God you ain't at the right hand of God you think you're somebody but you really a mess and in order for me to get you up here I gotta step down and come to where you are and let you know how to get up there for real Oh, preach right there, Pastor Will. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, every saint must understand. You can't be sorry. You can't speak sorrowful. If God is calling you to step down from something, do it with joy. Do it with excitement. Don't do it reluctantly. Don't let God have to drag you kicking and screaming off of your high horse. Say, Lord, if this is where you want me to go, I'll gladly do it. Because somebody's going to get saved through my service. Somebody's going to be blessed because I took a step down. Somebody say hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the first step down is you got to leave your glory and embrace God's joy. Get real joy. See, glory makes you happy, but God gives you joy. Glory makes you feel a little something, something, but God gives you joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not this little promotion, not this little title, not this little house, not this little car. I can prove it because you was happy for one day when you got the car. Now you're mad because you got to make all them car payments. You was happy for one week when you got that house. Now the mortgage payment showing up. You was happy, told everybody about your promotion. Now you realize that every level got a new devil. Can I preach in this place? But, see, glory, self-glory is temporary. But the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, to know that you are in God's will, to know that you're doing something that God wants you to do, that's a joy that lasts. Even when you want to cry, that joy is still there. Even when you feel a little down, that joy is still there. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. The world didn't give me this right here. They gave me a little piece of glory which lasted but for a moment. But God gives me joy that is with me even when I'm down. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's move on real quick. Are y'all getting this? The first step to the mind of Christ is to leave your glory and embrace God's joy. The second step is you got to, everybody say, empty yourself. Empty yourself. The Bible says, the next, in Philippians 2 and 7, but made himself of no reputation. Christ's second step downward to humility was that he made himself of no reputation. That means, that's from the Greek word kino, which means to empty, to empty. So what did Christ empty himself of? Everybody listen to me on this, because this is going to bless three people in here, and, and maybe four, maybe five and a half. 
What did he empty himself of? Some people say he emptied himself of his deity, but he did not. He was 100% God and 100% man. He did not empty himself of his de de deity. He was still the son of God. Even though he came down, he was still the son of God. That's going to bless a few of y'all in just a minute. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And there was nothing that was done, that was ever done without God, without the word. Huh. And, and the Bible says, and the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh. The word, which was in heaven on the right hand of God, came down and was made flesh, but it was still the word. Y'all still ain't helping with me. See, sometimes y'all feel, because you've made those positions your identity, when you lose a position, you lose yourself. Huh. But when you know who yourself is, you can lose the position and still be yourself. See, he said, although I'm stepping down, I'm still God. I'm still God. Oh, y'all ain't helping a brother in this place. You think you're losing your mind because you lost a little title, lost a little piece of money, lost a little reputation. God made himself of no reputation because it didn't matter. You feeling embarrassed because everybody knows huh, you're going through this. Oh, uh, uh, you lost your husband, you lost your wife, you lost your job, you lost your career, you lost your money. And so you're feeling bad huh, because you lost huh, your glory. Huh. So you was excited when you got it but now you feel bad that you're losing it because you put your identity in it so when you lost it you lost yourself but Christ came down and he was still God he oh y'all ain't helping me in this place he said oh preach in this place y'all need to understand y'all ain't doing this to me I voluntarily stepped down and allowed you to do it Peter took out his sword, starting to fight. Jesus said, oh no, put that sword away. He said, look, listen here, brother. If I wanted to, I know how to fight. I got a legion of angels. I only need one angel for 144,000. Ain't but a garrison of these guys. I only need a half an angel for this. But I could send for a whole legion if I wanted to. But I'm not, because I know who I am. <sighs> Just because I lost something, I still know who I am. I still know who I am. Just because I'm taking your mess, I still know who I am. Just because I'm letting you lie on me, I still know who I am. Just because I'm letting you talk about me, I still know who I am. Just because y'all laughing at me because this happened or that happened, I still know who I am. I'm still the same man I was when I was at the top. I just happened to be down here. But I'm still God. I'm still will. Some people, I see people, when they lose their jobs, they lose their careers, they get all depressed and they get frustrated. And I remember telling this one girl, I said, darling, you the same woman that was making $100,000. Just because the economy shifted, you didn't shift. Because the people don't recognize you anymore, you still the same person. That's going to help somebody. That's going to help somebody. That's going to help somebody. If you did it and now you've lost it, the person who did it is still in you. If you started the business and it became successful and then you went bankrupt, you're still the person that started the business and was successful. If you got to, went to school, got the degree, got the job making uh, six, seven figures, if you lose all of that, you're still the person that did it. Is that helping anybody right there? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still who I am. So, 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 check this out, check this out. So, so he... Uh, uh, empty. Everybody say empty. Yeah. Empty. Made himself of no reputation. Made himself of no reputation. Instead, he gave up. See, what, what did he empty himself of? Let me tell you what he really emptied himself of. When you read that in the New Living Translation, that passage just says these words. The Bible says, but he made himself of no reputation. It's translated, instead, he gave up his divine privilege. He gave up his prerogatives. And I kept on researching he gave up his rights. I said, oh, 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 see, see, everybody say he gave up his rights. That's privileges, entitlements, birthrights. The second challenge we have in embracing the mind of Christ is we fight 
for what we think is ours. Amen. It's my right to be here. That's my privilege. That's my privilege. That's my privilege. That's my privilege. That's my right. I fight for my rights. Y'all ain't treating me right. This ain't right. This ain't right. This ain't right. Oh, I'm going to preach right there. So we fight for our privilege, and yet he being God gave his up. He didn't give up being God. He gave up his rights of a God. Everybody say rights. He emptied himself of his right to be great. The Bible said, let me tell you something. See, God, he, he left heaven and came down to earth. But even when he came down to earth, he didn't even want the privileges of being great on earth. The Bible says, you know, Christ was born in a barn. Girl, I got to go to Rex to have my baby. I ain't going to Durham Regional. Them people over there. I am preaching all by myself. He was born in a stable. There was animals. There was animals. There was no air freshener in there. It smelled in there. He was raised in Nazareth. Now, that don't mean nothing to some of you all. But I need you to think of the worst side of town where the ghetto folk is. Where you grew uh, uh, back at home. I mean, I, I grew up in a place. It could be called the ghetto. The projects. Anybody know anything about that stuff? That's what Nazareth was. How do I know? Because when somebody was telling another man about Jesus, I believe his name was Nathaniel. Nathaniel said, is there anything good out of Nazareth? He from where? Okay, y'all didn't get that. He said, is there anything good coming out? That was straight hood. Straight ghetto. That's where he born in a stable, in a barn, and grew up, I don't know, Southeast Durham, Southeast Raleigh. Y'all ready to go home? Are y'all getting anything out of this? And the preacher, and the man said, he came from Nazareth? For real? I ain't never heard of nothing good coming out of Nazareth. That's what he chose. So he didn't come down and then go to the king's house. He went straight to the hood. He emptied himself of his even right to fight for himself. How do you do that? Let me close with this. And I didn't even get to the third one. I'll give you a little taste of it. He, you have to use, everybody say, temperance. See, your rights is something that you naturally fight for. And the only way to give that up is you have to develop what is called self-control. You have to discipline yourself, especially when you know you can slap a person, when you can hit a person. You have to have discipline to not do that. You, when you know you can cuss them out real good. You have to have self-control and discipline. The, see, that was one of the fruits of the Spirit. And, and no, when you know you're right, how many people have been in an argument and know you're right? Ain't that hard to be quiet when you know you're right? Me and my wife used to argue, and she, she, she would say, you think you're always right. And I was just, in my mind, I was like, am I supposed to think I'm wrong? <laughs> and so we would go in, because we both thought we were, so we would fight for our, we had to have the last word because we were, oh, y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. And so we fight for our rights, and the only way, the only way, I'm, getting, I'm ready to help two couples right now. One of y'all got to develop temperance, self-control, 
that when you know you're right, I'm just going to hold my peace. That's what Jesus did. He knew he was right, but he held his peace. Everybody say temperance. temperance. Say it again, temperance. 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 He literally said, see, uh, see here's the thing y'all got to get, and I, I shared this. He said, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you know what's in you is great, you don't have to fight to prove it. When you know what is in you is right, you don't have to fight for your rights. The only people that got to fight for the people, the people don't realize that you already are right. And if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, if you get temperance and just say, I will hold, the Bible says Christ never uttered a word. He knew they were lying. He knew he had been betrayed, but he never uttered a word. He emptied himself of his right to fight back. He would not pick up a sword. He would not argue back. And, 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 and First Lady, as a result, he kept going down, kept going down. The second step to the mind of Christ is emptying yourself of your rights by implementing temperance. Everybody say self-control. You can't do it naturally. It takes the Holy Spirit. The last one I want to go with today is the third one. Everybody say lower yourself. So, Leave your glory, empty yourself of your rights, your rights to fight, your rights, then lower yourself. Let me finish this one real quickly. Y'all give me five minutes. Everybody say lower yourself. The Bible says, and he took on the form of a servant. This is going to help, help some of y'all. The third step downward to humility was that he took on the form of a servant. The entire life of Christ was that of being a servant. Serving God as a child. Uh, 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 when, when, remember when, when Christ was 12 years old and he said, I got to be about my father's business. He was serving his Lord and say He was serving his God. He, he, uh, 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 when his parents said, no, you need to come home, he gave up and he started serving them. Uh, 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 he went on to serve mankind as the Savior. His whole life was about serving. And that's what happened to me about 18 years ago. I was climbing the corporate ladder. I wanted to be somebody. And I thought I was a little bit smart. Had a little education. Got a little degree. Knew my math and my sciences and my English and all that. I didn't know my English. I knew my math and my science. Uh, uh, and and, 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 and uh, I can't spell a lick. Thank God for spell check. Praise Jesus. Uh, 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 but, 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 I, I was a little bit smart and I was climbing the ladder and I was getting my stuff and getting my money and getting my house and getting this and getting that. And all of a sudden, I gave it up to become a servant, to become a servant. And what separates me from some other pastors is some pastors become pastors, but they don't become servants. They become pastors the same way managers become managers and bosses become bosses because they try to get glory in being a pastor. I'm going to preach all by myself. How big can I get? How much? can I have? How many titles can I get? But I became a servant. I became a servant. He lowered himself to become a servant. You know why this is a problem for a lot of people? Are y'all getting this? Is anybody getting this stuff? You know why it's such a hard problem for us to lower ourselves and become a servant? Because uh, you get no honor. Look at your neighbor and say, we want our honor. Say it again, we want our honor. And the, 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 the challenge with in, in, in becoming a servant is we want our respect. We want, we want to be respected. As human beings, we hate being disrespected, insulted, slighted, belittled, di disparaged, and denigrated. Being dishonored can break up relationships. A husband uh, uh, can feel bad because he feels like his wife don't honor him. His wife don't respect him. Men got this thing called ego. I'm going to preach in this place right there. And we don't like it when we feel like our wives don't honor and respect us, don't stroke our ego, don't call us Mac Daddy, don't tell us we the man. We feel bad. We don't like that when our wives don't honor us. Uh, ladies, feel bad when you're not being honored by your husband. you treating that little hussy over there better than you're treating me. Uh, uh, Y'all ain't working with a brother in this place. Uh, and you, you, you acting better with them than you acting with me because we don't like being dishonored. We got to have our respect. We, it, it, it becomes huge problems. Uh, we develop beefs with each other over being disrespected. Uh, we, people have been killed because they felt like they were disrespected. Uh, people have been shot and destroyed 
How dare you uh, step up to me? Huh? Somebody pull out their gun and all of this because it disrespected. That's one of the biggest issues in prison is you can't disrespect somebody. You might get shanked. You might get killed because respect. We got to have our honor. Somebody say honor. We break up relationships. We develop beefs. There are rappers that are dead today because they felt like they got dishonored or disrespected and somebody shot them, somebody killed them. This happens in our neighborhoods all the time. People are shooting and killing each other because they are being dishonored. They got beef with each other because they're being disrespected. And so they kill each other because we want our honor. We want to be respected. We will leave a marriage, leave a church, leave a job because we're not being honored. We're not being respected. How dare you disrespect me? I will have my honor. We don't want to be dishonored. And a servant has no honor. The servant doesn't speak. They're not interested in your opinion. The servant is just there to serve. Christ, uh, he lowered himself to become a servant. You got the answer, but you're quiet. You got the solution, but you're quiet because you're there to serve. You're not there to be respected. Lowering yourself to become a servant. The Bible actually uses this word in translation of servant is slave. 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 That means no anticipation of being paid for the service that you're getting. See, if you're getting paid for it, then you're getting a little honor. I'm going to preach right there. See, some of y'all will work as long as you get paid for it. But as soon as somebody tell you, girl, they're just taking advantage of you. They're just taking advantage of you. Some of y'all get a little attitude then because you feel like you're being dishonored. You're being disrespected. They just use you. just use you. I tell people, ain't nothing wrong with being used. You just don't want to be abused. But you want to be used. You want to be useful. And that's what a servant is. A servant is used. A servant is useful, but we feel disrespected. People will develop these things. Uh, Lowering yourself to become a servant requires another element of God's spirit called meekness. Everybody say meekness. Let me close this out. But he made himself a no reputation, took on the form of a servant, took on the position of a slave. To be a slave is to work without any expectations of being paid. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. See, It is the mind of God to pay you. It is the mind of Christ to work without pay. We can only think about getting paid. That's honor. Christ became dishonored, became a slave with no expectations of being paid. This is the Holy Spirit working. Being honored is a form of payment. You expect to get it. Jesus was dishonored, but he kept on serving. How? Because he put on the clothes, the garment. Y'all, this is the last thing I'm going to share with you. Get this, get this, and we're going to pray. He put on the garment of humility. He clothed himself with humility. Peter said it like this. He said, don't let your outward appearance dictate who you are. That's your glory, the plaiting of your hair, the clothes you wear, the shoes, the houses. Don't let that be who defines you. Don't let your glory define you. Don't let your position, your titles define you. He said, be defined by the hidden man of the heart. Check this out. Be defined by what's on the inside of you. And he said these words. Look at this. He said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, In other words, see, that stuff that y'all getting honor for, that's corruptible. What does that mean? Here today, it corrupts. You could be on top today. I mean, you ever watch them shows, where are they now? (laughs) Anybody seen those? Where are they now? I mean, I saw some of them, like, remember back in the 70s and 80s, them rappers was on top? And then they say, they show you, where are they now? Somewhere flipping burgers at McDonald's. Because their glory was only determined by what they had. But he said, don't let that dictate you. Don't let that dictate you. He says this here. First lady, uh, am I teaching, baby? (laughs) Thank you, darling. Thank you. 
He said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, which in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament, check this out, of a meek spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price, to keep serving when you are dishonored, when you are offended, when you have to deal with offensive people, you have to put on the garment, the ornament of meekness. You have to lower yourself and put on meekness because when you're down there, it don't even matter. When you are clothed with meekness, you don't care about whether or not you're being disrespected. You don't care about these things. This is what God wanted us to be. This third step to the mind of Christ is lowering yourself to become a servant by putting on God's meekness. My next message, I'm going to talk about how you make yourself, humble yourself, destroy yourself, and even disgrace yourself. But first, I wanted you to get what Christ did. He already had it, and he left it. He knew who he was, but he emptied himself of his rights. And he didn't worry about being honored. He lowered himself to the form of a servant. We can't do this on our own. It takes the power of God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. If you receive that, give God a great big hand. Please.